Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and the fit for this video is Lobo. The other day I posted a video about how Deuteronomy 32, 8, and 9 seems to talk about God's Father. And another creator who disagrees with me made a response video. So let's check it out. So Dan's claim here is that El Elyon is giving Adonai his portion and that El is another god that comes from a pantheon of gods and Adonai is the storm deity that's placed second tier to El. The problem, unless I missed it, is scholars don't say that the Hebrew Israelites steal this. They're using this as evidence that the Israelites evolved out of the Canaanite pantheon. If they did, a shared mythology like this would be expected. Yes, it is to be expected. And at no point did I argue that anyone stole this. This is precisely my point. The question is, where and when does Adonai enter the picture? Because Adonai is not a part of this outgrowth from broader Canaanite society. Adonai is entirely unknown from broader Canaanite society. So where does Adonai come from? The current scholarly consensus is that Adonai is a secondary transplant from outside of Israel. And I think one of the best discussions on this is Daniel Fleming's book, Adonai Before Israel, Glimpses of History in a Divine Name. But this is the consensus view. You can also find it in Stavra Kapulu's book, God and Anatomy. You can find it in Miller's book. You can find it 30 years ago in Reiner Alberts's work. You can find it in Tom Stark's wonderful book, The Human Faces of God. You can find it in the English translation of Tomas Romer's book, The Invention of God. You can find it on the part of multiple scholars in this edited volume. You can find it in my own work, on Adonai's divine images, a cognitive approach. And you can also find it probably most comprehensively discussed in Ted Lewis's 1,000 plus page book, The Origin and Character of God. Because again, this is the scholarly consensus and all of those scholars and dozens more point to Deuteronomy 32, eight and nine as supportive of Adonai's secondary introduction into the broader Canaanite pantheon. Now, yes, it's true that El is worshipped as another god, but that doesn't necessarily mean that when the Hebrew Bible uses the name El, that they are referring to the Canaanite deity. So a couple things here. To begin, Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9 doesn't use the designation El. It just uses the title El Yon. But I'm glad to see that you already agree with me that the title El Yon is far more closely and directly linked with the Northwest Semitic high deity El than it is with Adonai. The next thing is I at no point whatsoever ever said that any and all occurrences of the Hebrew word El necessarily refer to the Northwest Semitic high deity El as distinct from the Israelite deity Adonai. I don't believe that is the case. In fact, the vast majority of the time, I think that it is referring to El as Adonai because, as I argue in my publications, I think the two were probably conflated somewhere around 1000 BCE. Some scholars argue that they weren't even conflated until just before the exile, but I think that's a bit too late. And we have indications that the text is trying to argue for the conflation of the two. For instance, the name Joel means Adonai is El, and not just Adonai is God, but Adonai is the Northwest Semitic high deity El. So there are names that reflect the goal of asserting the assertion of the two deities, and there are a lot of other pieces of data that suggest the two at one point were separate and then were conflated. And that is the scholarly consensus. Here's the problem. Dan gives no reason on why we should think that the author of this passage intended the word El to have the Ugaritic high god as its referent. You can't just assume that. So at no point have I argued that Deuteronomy 32, eight and nine is pointing to the Ugaritic high deity El. As I've already pointed out, it actually doesn't use the word El in the passage, it just uses the title El Yon. But when it does refer to El as distinct from Adonai, I'm not saying it's pointing to Ugarit, I'm saying it's pointing to the Israelite high deity. We have evidence for a people group named Israel as far back as around 1208 or 1210 BCE with the Merneptah Stele, and most scholars agree this seems to indicate that El is the patron deity of this people group. We have absolutely zero evidence for any deity named Adonai anywhere 
until the second half of the ninth century BCE, where we get the name Adonai referred to as the patron deity of Israel, and we get the names of some kings with Yahwistic theophoric elements in their names. And so in that 350 yearish gap, at some point Adonai likely showed up. That makes more sense to scholars than just assuming that Adonai was lurking under the surface of these references to El the whole time. An example of what this could be is when a Christian says the word God and a Muslim says the word God, or when a Coptic Christian says the word Allah or a Muslim says the word Allah, they have vastly different representations of what the word means. So that's the use of the words for God in the generic sense of the deity rather than as the proper name of a specific deity. So this is a false analogy. And Dan is one to say that words don't have any meaning except for what we prescribe to them. So the question is, what did the early Israelites mean when they said El? That is a question, but it's not the question because again, El does not occur in Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9. We just have the title El Yon. But we have direct evidence for a people group called Israel dedicated to a deity named El over 300 years before we have any evidence whatsoever for any deity named Adonai. And so where did that deity come from? How did they become identified with El and when? We don't have any clear evidence. But one thing that we do have is Adonai in the earliest reflections of their divine profile being represented as a storm deity. And in the broader Southwest Asian pantheons represented at Udgarit, at Phoenicia, and elsewhere, the storm deity is one of the offspring of El. The storm deity is associated with Baal. And in the Hebrew Bible, we have tons of evidence that Adonai and Baal were in conflict regarding who was the rightful storm deity in that region. And so, most scholars believe this evidence supports the identification of Adonai as distinct from El and as coming into the pantheon on the second tier trying to appropriate the storm deity profile from the Northwest Semitic storm deity Baal. Well, if we look at texts like Exodus 6.3, it says that Adonai revealed himself to Jacob and Abraham as El, not as Adonai. This is such an odd passage to pick as evidence that Adonai is identified as El because this passage is trying so hard to argue that Adonai is El, but it's suggesting that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know the name Adonai. But when we look in our version of Genesis as it has come down to us, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all explicitly call on the name Adonai. So what's going on here? How did the author of Exodus 6.3 get this so wrong? Well, most scholars would suggest they probably didn't get it wrong, that they either didn't know about or didn't consider authoritative versions of the patriarchal narratives that included the name Adonai. They probably gave priority to earlier versions of the patriarchal narratives that did not include the name Adonai. This is evidence that the name Adonai, where it occurs in Genesis, is probably a secondary addition. And another piece of evidence that supports this conclusion is the fact that throughout the entire book of Genesis, there's not a single personal name that includes a Yahwistic theophoric element. Nobody named their child. No author named a character after Adonai. Once we get to Exodus and then throughout the rest of the Hebrew Bible, overwhelmingly Adonai names are the majority and there's not a single one anywhere in Genesis. And so this passage is actually evidence that Adonai and El had not yet been conflated, at least in the traditions that were considered authoritative or that were given priority by the author of Exodus 6.3. So this is an odd passage to pick as evidence that Adonai and El were always considered the same deity. It's evidence that they were not. 